you stare into the abyss, the abyss stares back. Why are humans so obsessed with death? Would we have such a short time to live? Is something on the other side? Welcome to our time standstill. No one leaves and no one will. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. Life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. Soren Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard was a 19th century philosopher whose work continues to resonate with those seeking to understand the complexities of faith, individuality, and the human experience. As a devout Christian, Kierkegaard grappled with the challenges of living a life of faith in a rapidly changing secular world. His writings marked a deep religious consciousness, offer profound insights into the nature of belief and the individual's relationship with God. Kierkegaard's philosophy emphasizes the importance of personal choice, commitment, and the pursuit of an authentic religious life. As our previous videos have included more agnostic and atheist philosophers, to balance out the Obsessed with Death series, it's crucial to add in some philosophy of those from the non-agnostic side. Kierkegaard's writings delve deeply into the human experience, individuality, faith, and the struggle to find meaning in existence, making his works a rich source of existential philosophy and thought. And today, I feel like his work fits well with our journey into the dark side of Burgos. In 1096, simultaneously to when the Catholic Church was launching its series of crusade wars against the Middle East to reclaim the land that the Christian holy book, the Bible, claimed was part of theirs, a modest chapel was commissioned by King Alfonso IV of Leon in what we know today as Burgos in northern Spain. Soon after completion, the church demanded an expansion in the church, as now it was seen as too small for the town, and thus must grow to suit the town and the ego of those around. Clearly, this had nothing to do with the small dick energy the new bishop, who had just come in to run the area, had, and him wanting an even more glorious place to represent his contribution to the Catholic Church. Maybe it would even gain him a papal vote one day. It didn't. Over the next 200 years, as over 1% of the world's population was brutally murdered in the Crusades, Burgos was fighting her own war by destroying housing around the city center to reclaim area and expand the once modest cathedral. Finally, in around 1200 CE, enough land was reclaimed where it could be constructed to the ginormous structure we see here. Throughout changes in leadership of the papal reign, local cardinals, each have had their say in how to make this cathedral even more grandeur. Because you know, the higher the spire, the closer to the sire. <laughs> Throughout the nearly thousand years it's been under construction and reconstruction, many of the Catholic leaders have been buried in various chapels, both in the main sanctuary and also in the catacombs underneath the church. In the cathedral itself, there are 19 different chapels where visitors can pay their respects, money, and other things to a variety of dead Catholic leaders and saints in the area. The belief is that by paying respects, prayers, and money to these deceased people, the person praying will gain respect in heaven or an award of good luck to the person who's praying. It's interesting to note that Kierkegaard had something to say exactly about this. The function of prayer is not to influence God, but rather to change the nature of the one who prays. When people are in prayer to saints or to God or to someone who's not living, are they changing the mind of the saint to provide protection, safety, or wealth? Or are they transforming a manifestation in themselves to generate a different outcome in their life? If we continue down the existential road that Kierkegaard plotted throughout his life, are humans using the dead people of the past religions as icons to associate their own actual power within them? Do living people recognize the power they have? Why do we give it all away? 
It goes to question that people are scared of the innate power they have in themselves to change a situation, transform the outcome of a challenging circumstance, harness the energy and nature of people to create magic in whatever definition of the word you'd like it to be. Why are people so obsessed with praying to the dead, rich patriarchs of the past when they could spend time elsewhere? I find a similarity if the residents of Man, Channel Islands, St. Helena, and Falcon Islands all prayed to Queen Elizabeth II and her heirs and sent her additional monetary bonuses on top of the taxes they already paid to her to thank her for gifting them with British language, government, and aid. This is what I feel like Kierkegaard was exploring in his philosophy, the duality and balance between what the church is teaching versus the existential nature of a human. Said most succinctly, life can be understood backwards but it must be lived forwards. And one homage that lies in Burgos that follows this exact statement is the fact that Burgos is the most notable stop on the acclaimed Camino de Santiago. Each year, thousands of pilgrims walk between 100 to 1,000 kilometers across Western Europe on a journey to end in Camposta de Santiago on a cliff that overlooks the Atlantic Ocean. Humans walking this route, often called pilgrims, are encouraged to spend time on the walk without something they would normally have in their regular life. For some, it's alcohol, others sex, others speaking. Throughout the multi-week journey, it's encouraged to look within and search within, to understand the life that one has lived and to continue to live it one step at a time. The juxtaposition that sits in Burgos with a cathedral that has displaced thousands of residents costs millions of euros, bringing in millions of euros a year, both in sacrament money and tourism money, to the pilgrimages that many take to raise an energy in the air that can only be experienced if one visits. And this is all because we celebrate death in these cathedrals. Maybe Carl Jung says it best, church was a place I can no longer go. There was no life, only death.